All right, guys, it has been a minute since we've worked on the, uh, the F-14. It's been a while. Uh, the last clip in this particular video, I can't even remember what it was, but uh, it's been a couple weeks. So anyways, we are now getting back to the 14. We've got a two week deadline to get this thing done. Let's get at it. Uh, so these are the upgraded actuators from SkyMaster. What do they do to make them upgraded? Well, they manufactured their own end here, which is an aluminum end, which is good. We can just take that and switch it out. And then the actual covers here as well too. These are normally plastic, which would probably be just fine. But uh, in this case, uh, SkyMaster has machined some uh, aluminum ones, which you just unscrew the plastic ones and you can screw on the aluminum ones. So that's the uh, the upgraded actuator. So we're gonna order three replacements. So that's the plan with these actuators. So we are uh, waiting on the actuators at this point. All right, so regarding the scissor linkage on the gear, the stock one reminds me of like, like a 450 helicopter type stuff. So Kind of cheap, kind of low quality, and uh, yeah, not, not very impressive. So we do need to find a replacement for that guy. Ideally, metal would be great. I'm gonna see if I can source something. The biggest challenge is the shaft coming out of the air cylinder, uh, having the proper threads for uh, something metal. So I'm gonna see what we find. And also the size of the head as well too. We're fairly restricted on the size of the head here because if it's too big, it's gonna contact that scissor linkage. So I'm gonna do a bit more research on this guy and see what we can find. But I think the Dubro ones here, the two millimeter swivel ball links are a way better alternative, higher quality material here as long as they fit. And uh, so we'll see about that, but that's kind of what's in the works for um, the gear. Okay guys, so we're just going through the different actuators here. We got the replacement Accutronics Accu actuators, Accutonics actuators. And so this is the stock setup and this is the upgraded setup. Now it's pretty straightforward as to what the changes are. So the motor system and everything is the same. Obviously the, uh, the mounting uh, system here is upgraded because it's aluminum. The uh, the end piece on the stock one is plastic. The end piece on the upgraded one's aluminum. Now one of the big changes that uh, this was not just a drop in replacement is the actual actuator arm here is aluminum. So the the housing piece and this retainer clip is al aluminum or metal. Uh, the stock one this is plastic. So, uh, so what I'm gonna do is essentially keep the motor, the housing on the new one. We're going to switch out the actual actuating arm here for the previous one, and then we're gonna put it all together. So just wanna show you what the actual updates or upgrades are. Okay guys, so just uh, finished up with the actuators and just got this side reinstalled. I thought I'd show you what's going on here. So this is what I talk about in the wings. You don't wanna bury your connection inside the fuselage. I thought we'd never have an issue with these actuators, but I was wrong. So what I did was I just added another connector here uh, in between the new actuator and the actuator line. So essentially what we're gonna do while well, we've already heat shrunk that, we're just gonna fold these lines all up nicely and uh, they're gonna tuck in there. The snake skin's gonna cover up a bunch of this as, again as well. So. so new actuators are installed and then we have to make a change on the central box. All right guys, so we got the actuators all wired in. We got the voltage reduced on the BEC bank number two. So this side of the central box, we're running at six volts. That side of the central box, we're running at 8.2, I believe. This is all non-control surfaces on that side. It's like air valves and stuff like that. So anyways, our actuators are working perfect. 
So one thing I've done here is on my extended, so wings out, I've taken my angle low, finder low voltage, and just volts. lined it up here. The wings are equal when they're extended. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is make sure that when they're retracted, they are equal as well. All right guys, new actuators are installed. And this is cycle number six. What I've been doing is cycling them forward, backwards, waiting 15 seconds, and cycling them again. I'm gonna put about 20 cycles on these actuators and just check and see how they're, uh, how they're operating. So far, so good. All right guys, so giving this new Jersey modeler jug a little bit of a test here. Uh, this is the one with the DLE manual pump. Very slick unit. I've already played around with this a little bit, but uh, what I'm gonna do now is I've got um, about three quarters of a jug in there, and I wanna put it in my other jug. So I'm gonna transfer this over manually and see how long it takes. See how much of a struggle it is. This pumps a lot of fluids. I don't think it'll be a problem at all. All right, and I just stopped the camera, so it took basically five minutes to, uh, to drain this entire tank into my standard Jersey modeler tank. So very impressive unit. Uh, this thing moves, like I said, a ton of, of liquid. Uh, very nice pump, this DLE thing. So if you guys are interested, check out uh, jerseymodeler.com. Um, I'm also a dealer as well too, so the lighter side of RC, you can reach out to me and contact me as well. All right guys, so first step here for the rudders is we took the previous linkages off and we had the plastic ball ends installed on these linkages. And what we're doing here is we're switching them out for these CARF uh, linkages. These are metal. Uh, I had to make whole new linkages because the threaded piece is three millimeter uh, threads. So I used a three millimeter stainless rod, uh, a Sullivan Golden Clevis, these are also three millimeters. I actually didn't know that the, uh, the golden clevises came in three millimeters, but they do. So we've got the exact same setup here. Uh, we have to make the carbon piece a little bit longer because this is a little bit shorter. And uh, now we've done that to both of the rudders. And there's the other one right there. So now we'll get these things installed. Hopefully they just uh, plug and play like the previous ones. We had to use a little bit thicker carbon rod here. So hopefully there's enough room for that. Okay guys, so the rudders were all installed. They're all good. Um, now one of these pinch bolts down here, they actually weren't holding or clamping onto the carbon rod very well. So the solution to that is all you gotta do is take a little bit of three in one oil, put it on the actual bolt that goes through uh, where it contacts the aluminum clamp. The reason that's happening is because you're just not getting enough torque uh, with the friction against the aluminum. Once I did that, tightened up just perfect. So the thing I did here was I put a little keeper right there. This is just a three slash four millimeter uh, line holder for that uh, the rod that holds the uh, the hatch open. So we did that on both sides. And we're now moving into the name change. So I've already sanded this side down, uh, sanded the other side down. So we're just doing this in the reverse of the way they would have painted this on. So they would have painted this on by painting the red, putting the stencil on, painting the white name, weathering it, and then you're good. So what we've done is we've sanded the white down we're going to touch up the red in this area with my airbrush on both sides. And of course, on the actual opening canopy as well over there. And then uh, we're going to put our stencil on once the red's cured, paint the white, and that's the process. So it's a bit of a, bit of a pain. You know, I mean, you're trying to, uh, you know, not go too crazy on the, uh, the sanding here. You're just trying to get rid of the, the actual bumps for the letters because we're just gonna touch this entire area up, so. All right, and I believe I've mentioned already that this video is gonna be a lot of little tiny things that we're just dealing with. Uh, so you can see there, right where the light is shining, uh, while we were doing our initial gear tests, this section right here is really, really thin. Uh, the section over here is a little bit better, but it's still really thin. And those are the door stop areas. So this was overextending and getting stuck on the other side. So we want to, uh, 
create better door stops there. So that's gonna be one of the next things that I figure out here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that door stop off. We're going to uh, lay a piece of uh, probably heavy um, fiberglass cloth in there and uh, make another door stop just across that front section so it's a bit stronger. All right, one other thing that we're working on here at the same time is the rod holders. Now these are the rods that hold the hatches closed. Now we want somewhere to put these guys because when you open these hatches up, you can't just have the rods floating around somewhere. That's how they're gonna get lost. And then of course your day, unless you have spare ones of those, is gonna be pretty short flying this aircraft. So pretty much the best spot that I can think of that's really all the way through the fuselage that doesn't interfere with anything is right on top of the tank. So there's a split uh, in, the, in the structure of the fuselage. Uh, that's actually right on the edge where I'm at with these guys and I uh, just took a piece of airline here And I'm just going to use some CA on both sides and there's the other side and get these guys tacked down and uh, That shouldn't interfere with anything So on this side we can push this one all the way in or of course use it on this side And it doesn't interfere with our fueling or anything like that when this is pushed in all the way uh, the other side if we push it in all the way it's here um, so and then with it split like this, we still have access to our GSU plugs if we need them. So I think that's a great spot for them. We're just gonna use some thick CA and get those things tacked in place. Okay, so we've got all the supplies ready to fix that front door stop. So what we got here is some heavy uh, cloth. This is starch cloth, so it's, it's the stiff stuff. Uh, we got two layers of that. We've mixed up some 30 minutes slow cure epoxy. We've got our brush ready. And uh, what we'll do is we'll get these installed uh, all the way across that front door opening and that will create some new door stops. All right guys, and there we go. We've got the new front door stop installed and uh, we're just obviously gonna let that cure. All right, so name change on the front is done. I'll show you guys my process here. Um, so we're gonna also clear coat this, but we have to let this paint uh, dry for a couple days before we put that clear coat on. So anyways, that is, uh, is good to go. That's awesome. So it looked, looks really good. It turned out awesome. I was worried that the detail wouldn't show up on the paint stencils, but uh, showed up beautifully. So I'm very honored to uh, be able to put my name on this aircraft. Thank you, David, for that. That's uh, pretty slick. So that's what we have to do on the back still is my name and call sign. So pretty straightforward. Just put our stencil on, make sure all of our red is covered up and uh, use the airbrush to paint the white on there. All right, so we just pulled the paint masks off uh, of my name and uh, we still have the little bits to pull out. We're just gonna let the paint cure uh, for a couple hours before we do that. And uh, you can see the line here between the new red and the old red. Now, of course, on the front portion, it was fairly easy to hide because we have panel lines. On this one, what we're gonna do after this is all dried is we're gonna do a little bit of light sanding with some, uh, some really fine sandpaper. You know, you're talking about uh, in the thousands, like 4,000 grit type thing. And that's just gonna get rid of that uh, distinct line. And then once we clear coat it, it basically will be completely invisible. So turned out awesome. I'm gonna leave the tape on the glass just because when we clear coat it, uh, we need to protect the glass anyways. All right guys, name change is done. We've put clear coat on it and everything, so we're good to go there. What I'm working on next is our leak we have in the system. So right now we're sitting at 97.4. Uh, when we were playing this, playing with this before, when David was here, uh, we had a leak in the air brake down side, which is the yellow lines. Uh, so that was on my list to tackle. So there was no leak, air leak on the, uh, the upside. So one of the things that uh, I did a couple weeks ago was uh, Skymaster has been high sawing all of the nipples on their air uh, cylinders, which is great. They didn't do this one. So I high sawed that one. And uh, what I've done now is I actually took all of these cylinders apart and put some silicone lube in there. And uh, so that's been done. 
And now when we go air brake closed, we're at 96.6. Oh, we actually gained 0.1. So we're holding steady. Before it was going 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3. So you can see it's holding steady. So that is definitely a good thing. Everything else was solid on the aircraft. Uh, that is one good point to bring up here. Uh, not everybody knows this tip, so we'll call this a tip time. Uh, brought to you by, oh, hold on, hold on. Brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. Thank you, Trusty, for your wisdom. All right, um, so one thing I like to do with all air-powered aircraft, so air on the gear, is take some silicone oil, silicone shock oil from RC cars, and a couple times a year, put a few drops in the air fitting and put some air in the system. And as that silicone oil moves through the system, it lubricates and conditions all of the O-rings. Don't use a petroleum-based product that actually swells the uh, the O-rings and seals, which you don't want. You just want to lubricate and condition them. So it's a great thing to do a couple times a year. I mean, up here, I, I, on my, when I used to have an air aircraft or air gear aircraft, uh, we only fly for like six months of the year, so I would do it a couple times. I mean, if you're flying year round, do it more often. But a uh, great way to deal with things. Then if you do have a leaky gear, gear cylinder that's just not holding air, uh, put a, what I do is I take this tube, Uh, it's a little piece of Robart tubing. I like the Robart stuff because it comes on and off quite easy. And uh, basically, I uh, just have a, a, a bottle with some silicone shock oil. I hook this up to one side of the nipples, move the air cylinder. It sucks a couple drops of this stuff in. And uh, I do that on both sides of the air cylinder and it just helps condition and make those air cylinders work great. So that is your tip time for the F-14 episode. All right, guys, so we got a awesome shipment today. We got the new scissor linkages from Michael. So thank you, Michael, for rushing these out to us. And uh, let's take a look at these beauties and see what they look like. Nice. So there's one pair there. And another pair there. So Pretty awesome. So yeah, they've got a built-in stopping mechanism right here, which is the key, right? So when these legs retract, they go like this. And then when they extend, they go like this. And that's the, ultimately the problem with this, guys, with the Skymaster design is when they extend, they can continue overextending, and that puts all the pressure on that uh, small air cylinder that's on the actual gear. So. Very, very nice, Michael. Well done, those are awesome. And I think our linkages or pivots are in here. So these are all new pivot pins as well. And uh, so they're a little bit more scale design. They're single sided, so we can have this side sticking out, the C-clip on the inside, and uh, they are very scale. So thank you, Michael, those are beautiful. I'm sure they are, are going to work amazingly well. The other cool thing about these is he anodized them kind of that green color. So when you look at the F-14s, when the paint chips off, underneath the white paint is kind of a greeny color. And that was the, the point of uh, anodizing them like that. So awesome. All right, guys, so first thing we want to do on these things is get them painted, sorry, get them primed with etching primer. And uh, we want to get these things ready to install as quickly as possible so we can uh, start making our way through all of the technical parts of this aircraft. So we're just uh, giving them a nice bath in 99% rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol just to get rid of any of the uh, the lubricant and grease and stuff like that and we'll let them dry and then we will spray them with an etching primer basically the exact same process we did with the very first gear except uh, now we're painting them in summertime and not the middle of winter so we won't have any uh, any temperature issues 
All right, so during our testing previously, when David was here, uh, we were running the compressor quite a bit and it was, uh, the tube here was getting very, very hot. So that's the tube that directly comes out of the compressor, then goes to the check valve, then goes to the Teflon line. So we need to build a heat shield for this piece of tubing. Now, fortunately, I have some fireproof uh, shielding material and I had only this piece left and it is exactly the right size to fit over that tubing. So this is perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, slide this, un undo the tubing, slide this over top, and then we'll have our shielding, which weighs almost nothing and uh, great stuff. All right, and heat shield is installed. You can see it there. And legs are now primed and painted. So that was nice and quick. Uh, when you're using the etching primer, uh, just follow the instructions depending on what product you're using. But uh, this etching primer, basically after 30 minutes, they want you to install your paint, which I've done. Uh, we've done three coats on those legs. So now they just need to cure and then we'll do our weathering. So it's probably gonna take about two days for those things to be, uh, be dry enough where we can actually rough them up, weather them, do all that kind of stuff. So, but at least that's done and uh, we can continue moving on with the plane in the other areas that need attention. And I do have one more little piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to split this piece and I'm gonna put it around the output side of the compressor and just put a couple zip ties around it. And that's going to be a uh, number one, a removable piece if we need to get access to that but uh, it'll overlap that joint and uh, it'll cover up the metal tip of the compressor, which also obviously gets hot as well too. All right guys, so we've got, uh, we're just taking the plane off the stand here to do the center of gravity check once again, so we can confirm what batteries we need. You can see the, oh, the nose light right there. That's so cool. Anyways, figured we would take a quick look at the lighting system since we really haven't looked at that yet. Check, check, check. All put together. So the uh, the intake lights, as I call them, they're right there. Those turned out absolutely awesome. Uh, the sequencing on the lights right now isn't, I don't think, correct. I mean, we could leave them the way they are. It's pretty cool, but there's the tail lights there. There's the red intake lights or the left side and the wingtip light, which is currently flashing. It's a pretty nice setup. So we are just getting ready to do the center of gravity check. That's why the plane's on right now. And I know we talked about this a little bit before. We kind of set the plane up with the center of gravity. Uh, I can't remember exactly where, but we use the Zykoi machine. And basically after checking with some build threads, talking with some people, the proper center of gravity is right on the front uh, wing spar or the wing uh, mechanism spar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that bolt out a little bit and uh, we'll be able to hang it from that bolt and uh, do that on the other side obviously and that's going to be our C of G check on this aircraft. So the whole point of doing this right now is we want to make sure that we put uh, figure out how much weight we have available for our batteries in the nose. We had a figure uh, sorted out before but I think it was too much so we are going to uh, to figure that out one more time. Okay, so we're on the front wing bolt, and there we are, perfect C of G. Okay. All right, so both of the stock ball links for the scissor linkage uh, air cylinder, they're broken. Uh, that happened during our initial tests here. You can see the, uh, the end just split, and that's from those legs or the linkages overextending. So what I've done is taken a standard uh, Dubro uh, two millimeter self-tapping uh, threading ball link. So that's what they look like uh, stock. Uh, cut it down to match the same length and then also sanded out the profile there because we do need this to be uh, really no bigger than this guy. So right now we're about half a millimeter wider, uh, so extra material around the ball. Uh, this is also way better material as well too. This is quite brittle plastic. The Dubro ones are a lot stronger. So uh, we're gonna put this guy on our, uh, our stock air cylinder 
And uh, that's one of the first steps here. Well, I'll tell you guys, this landing gear has been a real challenge. Uh, basically just trying to get rid of as much friction as possible in the mains, but I think we're all sorted now. Uh, I've spent quite a few hours working on this. So we are holding air nicely with gear down. So what we'll do now with Nez's help is we will do a gear cycle. And uh, so gear up, brakes go on for a second to stop the wheels from turning and gear goes up. Now, right now the compressor or the pressure is sitting at 93.3, but what we'll do is, hi Nez, we're gonna leave the pressure where it's at and we're gonna drop the gear because it uh, comes down as well. So now we'll do that same cycle. We'll put some more air back in it with my compressor. <clears throat> so we'll go back up to about 102. Seems to be happiest at about 102 for its cycles. So we're at 102, gear up. And then we'll fill it back up to 102 now. So now we're back up to 102 and we will drop the gear. There we go. So a couple things that we've done here to reduce friction in the system. So I had a zip tie around this part of the leg before and that was holding the brake line coming down the two mini cylinder lines here. The problem is with the zip tie going around here, it was creating a lot of friction in the system. So I got rid of that zip tie. Everything still holds in place nicely. So the only visible zip tie we have on the lower portion of the leg is this one down here on the scissor linkage for the brakes. So that helped reduce a fair bit of friction. Other thing I did was take apart the legs again, which was an absolute uh, time monster and uh, put some lighter uh, lubricant on the rotation portion here. You gotta remember that this entire piece rotates. And uh, so you wanna use something fairly light here uh, versus like thick grease that comes stock with the system. The new linkages are working amazing. The new scissor links with the physical stop. Thank you, Michael, they are awesome and uh, way better on, the, uh, on those little cylinders. So those are some of the things I did with the main gear. Uh, other thing I did was put a little piece of wood right here. Now what happens is these gear come up, the doors push them or help them to get closed and the gear kind of over rotates and sits against the carbon wing uh, spar, I guess if you wanna call it, the wing mechanism and you can actually push the gear down without affecting the doors an eighth of an inch, which is what I did here. I added an eighth inch spacer to the underside of the, the wing mechanism. So now the gear rotates enough where the doors close, but it's not over rotating. And if it over rotates, then it needs to compensate or uh, counteract all of those rotational forces, which makes the gear a little bit less reliable. It still works, but it works better with that little spacer. We did the same thing on both sides. So all of the air cylinders have been serviced. So I've taken every single one of those air cylinders apart and on the, the gear. So we've got four in the front, uh, three on each of the gear itself or the, the mains, the doors. So you've got 10 doors in total. So those are all uh, lubricated, serviced. So they're working quite well. All right guys, well we've spent a few more hours, actually more than a few hours. It's been about eight hours playing with the gear. We also just fixed the air leaks underneath the main tray. So that alone is a nightmare to try and get underneath that main tray, but we did it. So the leak is fixed. Uh, the gear is working much better. 
which is really nice. The other thing I did was add a restrictor in the downline of the front gear. So when I drop this gear, you'll see that the front nose gear actually comes down slower. And the reason for that is it puts more air to the mains and makes sure the mains come down before the nose comes down. Now all of the gear when they drop, obviously they're being pushed down by the wind, but the key was those mains were getting hung up because uh, they didn't have enough air pressure to kind of push everything down. So if we uh, put a restrictor, a Robart restrictor on the red line of the front gear, works both ways, but it's primarily focused on the down slope there. And you'll see here, so there's, uh, how much PSI are we sitting at? 92.7 right now. And these gear should come up just fine. So the brakes kicked in for a second to stop the wheels. So there's probably 95 in there and they come up. Now that one, if it's not at 100, uh, it doesn't quite get its full rotation. But if we drop this gear, And then now we'll put about 100 PSI in there. Right now we were sitting at 78 when those came down. Sitting at about 100 point something. And then now we'll bring this gear up. And she almost gets fully installed or in the fuselage and the door pushes it up. So happy with that. It's definitely working way better than it did before. And I think barring any unforeseen circumstances, we are done with this landing gear. Hallelujah. All right, so we've got the tray all back installed. It feels really good to have that completed. Uh, very, very happy. So uh, the other thing I was able to do was clean up some of the wiring as well too. So that portion is done. Uh, it is time to move on to the canopy. So I'm gonna do a couple things here first. What I'm gonna do is get the uh, little devices that hold down the, uh, the servo wires installed, at least on this side and that one and this one. Uh, reason for that is because uh, we're done with all this stuff, right? On this one, we still have to install the uh, lead here that goes to the sequencer, the Zyquai sequencer for the canopy. So that's gotta go in number 19, but uh, I can do that as well and get that bank installed. So actually we can get all those guys installed and uh, we'll just have to wait and to do this one um, until we get all of our plugs plugged back in. So awesome progress. That's really, really nice. So I'm gonna get those guys back installed and then we'll start focusing on the canopy. So these guys were loose when I was taking that tray out. So I did pop them out and we'll just uh, glue those guys back on as well.